Your time has come at last, dear reader. While we began this tale long ago, we hope it is yours to finish. But this story is not yours alone. No, it is tied to another. And the journey you take together could change the fate of both our worlds. Shall we begin? They called it the Cinder Knight. What came from those dark, starless skies would change the world of Moss forever. The peace that had settled across the land was broken by an unconquerable nightmare. And that night, the animals nearly met their end. First, they killed the king. A winged creature broke from the shadows and plucked him from his royal bedchamber high atop the tallest tower. Next, the serpent Sarfog and the armies of the Arcane tore up from the underworld. They ravaged the castle in search of that which gave the king power beyond understanding. One of the fabled glass relics. The King's Guard fought bravely, but the castle soon pulsed with the Arcane's evil. Every room was gutted, every statue, tapestry, and adornment hexed. But the glass was never found. Even the reclusive sprites set aside their differences on that faded night. They sent a great champion, empowered by their own glass relic, to challenge the serpent and its steel army. Meanwhile, Sir Argus, commander of the King's Guard, led the survivors west through a temple long abandoned by their ancestors and far away from their newly risen enemies. It was an arduous escape. Finally, after passage beneath the impassable mire, they found refuge in a clearing, hidden safely in the trees. Argus charged back to join the Sprite Champion at the Mire's edge. Together, they fought back the Arcane and sealed the temple passage that led to the clearing. But the Champion was gravely injured. Clutching his glass, he retreated deep into the forest where he drew his last breath. A large tree grew upon him. It stood many years in watchful duty, safeguarding the glass, and awaiting its next hero. That hero, albeit an unlikely one, did arrive at a time she'd be needed most. Quill was out adventuring beyond the edge of the clearing. Dusk was creeping in, but she wondered what she might find if she went just a little farther. She was not exactly sure what she roused, but she felt no danger from the being silently peering down at her. So I'm looking around here, 
expecting to see something, and it turns out that would be me. Quill had to hurry. The village gates would soon close, and night would follow. All right, so welcome to um, kind of like a playthrough, maybe a, a let's play of Moss VR. Um, first time I'm playing this. The audio was uh, really off um, when I started this, uh, but I synced it as best as I could. It might be a second off. Um, I guess it's the, the Oculus Quest is notoriously bad for um, for the audio not being in sync, so. Um, I'll provide some commentary as I go along here, but for the most part, I'm just going to remain silent. I really do think that this, uh, was an absolutely beautiful game. Uh, watching it here doesn't do it any justice whatsoever. Of course, I had to figure all this stuff out, um... Figure out how to how to do these types of things for the first time. It's kind of disappointed uh, chopping through the grass. I was half expecting some rupees to uh, to kick out, uh, like from Zelda, um, but that didn't happen, and it won't happen. I'm guessing it's just aesthetics, being able to, to chop down grass in this game, so far. Night, her uncle often warned, was when danger was most present. But Quill preferred the stories of the magical creatures that woke to protect the forest. I know this game's been out for a while. I originally had it for my uh, PSVR, um, but I rarely ever played the PSVR, um, mainly because you can't truly roam around with it. It's attached to cords, so this Oculus Quest has been uh, has been a real nice addition to my gaming uh, stuff. That's the first one of those I found. Um, They become a little bit more hidden or harder to reach, and I, I do end up missing a couple, and you'll see me try to go back to try to get them after I realize that I missed them, but um, I guess that's my one complaint is uh, so far, at least in this uh, part of the video uh, that we're watching today, it's uh, nigh impossible to actually backtrack, so if you miss something, you're pretty much uh, shit out of luck. I was so happy to see that I could break crates and boxes and jars and stuff. Uh, one of my favorite things to do in, in Zelda.
was also somewhat disappointed that you can't interact, um, at least so far, with the other random mice uh, that you come across. You see, I, I give it a, a good effort, but um, I just couldn't figure out a way to interact with them. They just kind of shake their fingers at you when you get in their way. Take it this comes into play later, but uh, obviously I learned the hard way that mice cannot swim. It's not the first time it happens either. Well, that was intentional just to find out um, when it happens, you know, coming up in this gameplay here today. Uh, it's purely accidental. So this was like uh, right here, really like my first puzzle to try to figure out um, what I'm supposed to do. There's really it's 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 linear thus far, but there's no hand holding. You got to kind of move the control uh, around the screen to see what it will interact with. See now that was an accident. <laughs> so you have to start over. Um, so you move the control across the screen, and uh, when something lights up, you can interact with it. In this case, uh, that slowed down, so that's going to allow me to ascend a little bit higher. Um, it's it's very interesting uh, what they what they do in here. It's very. I, I had no idea that it was going to be somewhat similar to uh, a Legend of Zelda game, um, but it's very exciting. Now, I didn't even see that one when I went up there. Thanks to her new friend, Quill had saved priceless grains from the hourglass. She raced to the door of the cottage she shared with her uncle, hoping once he saw her discovery, he lose himself in tales of its legend. I thought I could interact with the squirrel, but like everything else, uh, breathing in this world that is a that is a no. But the squirrel will come into action here shortly. Uncle Argus was watching the evening light dim when Quill burst through the front door of their cottage. Uncle. Uncle, there's something you have to see. Out past the bell again, he scolded. Quill, I've told you countless times. I know, Quill replied, crestfallen. I didn't mean to worry you, but I found something strange and magical. Quill's hands trembled as she showed him the glass. What is it? 
she asked. A look of panic spilled over her uncle's stoic exterior. Where did you find this? roared Uncle Argus. Quill had never seen her uncle so shaken. Just west of the clearing, she explained. And as soon as I picked it up, something started helping me. Uncle Argus followed her motion. A reader. With you, here, right now? Quill, what you found is very powerful and very dangerous, he said with great concern. If I could take this burden from you, I would. But this reader has chosen. Even with the moon full and bright, I must go right away. Quill pressed. Where are you going? I can help. We can help. No, he snapped. They'll find you and tear you apart. I have to go alone. It is for your own safety and for everyone here in the clearing. His long, heartfelt hug told her he was heading for danger. I'll be back before midnight. Until I return, I need your word you will not leave the clearing with that glass. Promise me, Quill. I promise, she said reluctantly, wondering where her uncle was going so deep into the night. Her uncle kind of looked like a... That was going to be kind of like a bad guy. We don't know yet, but he's kind of got like a missing eye and a scar, which is usually indicative in stories that somebody is probably evil. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. It could be just a battle wound or something, too. Hey, kid. Kid. Wake up. This is very Zelda like. Hey kid, over here! I know where your uncle went. I can show you. You're twofold now. Very important. Bring that glass and your sidekick too. We're going to need them. Now it said bring your sidekick. Uh there's like a a bee. Uh Quill upstairs. Starving, wait! So that's where I'm making my way up to, thinking that that was maybe my sidekick. Um, the sidekick is either uh, the sword, or me as the player, the giant that's helping Quill out. Because I found no way here to um, get into this little cage. I think that's a bee. It looks like a bee. So, I figured it, it can't possibly be that. It's either the sword is the sidekick that it's referencing or it's me. It's probably me. Quill had never met a starving. In campfire stories, they often meddled in the lives of mortals. And when they appeared, mischief followed. At least they didn't always like, hey, listen! Hey, listen! PTSD Passage through shit. the Eastern Gate was strictly forbidden. But despite her promise, Quill knew in her heart that Uncle Argus needed her. I really do immensely enjoy the ability to um, use the headset to kind of like peer 
over walls. Quill demanded answers. Starving, you can't just barge in here with your riddles. Where is he? What do you know? And that's in nooks and crannies and around corners, you know, kind of the try to see if there's any secrets that you can see. It's uh, very intuitive. The trouble your uncle's heading for is the kind only you and that silent giant up there can get him out of. Okay, so this one kind of took me a little longer than I'd like to admit. This way, kid, urged the starving. And don't forget to tuck your ears in. I didn't fall in the water there, quite honestly. I'm beginning here is so cool like with how they've got the deer in the background it really gives you a sense of scope especially when you're wearing the VR set uh, of the world that you're in um, it's just absolutely stunning this really doesn't know justice if you've got VR capabilities and the chance to pick up this title uh, I highly recommend it Amazed again at it. I didn't fall in. Now here, as you can see in the bottom of the screen, there's a scroll um, on a ledge, and I totally missed it. I mean, I didn't see it at all, um, and I just kept going. My eyes were just so focused on Quill that as soon as I get to this next part here, I'll see it in the background eventually. Um, but that's like, that's my complaint. Like, uh, I'll try to get back and um, my attempts are futile. I can't, uh, I can't really backtrack. So that's like, uh, this is going to end up being the, the second one that I miss. Just on the other side is the mire, the starving assured her. There's a squirrel. There's a good chance your uncle's still there. And see, now that's where I see it, and I'm like, oh shit. Like, I don't know how important they are yet. Um, and I am somebody that likes to try to complete games 
Obviously, that's not going to happen now. Um, but I really, really try really hard to go back. The game just doesn't let you. Yeah. At that point, I should have just been like, fuck it, but, yep, one more. It's not going to happen. It's kind of disappointing. Like, that's going to help. Like, that's going to do anything. And, uh, you're going to see uh, a slip, an oopsie. There you go. I'm not really good with the jumping, obviously, when it comes to uh, water. This part's really awesome with the swords and the helmets and remnants of uh, a great battle. Did you hear that? The starling seemed anxious. I've ruffled enough leaves in these parts. I can't be seen with you. I'll catch up with you later. Just don't go and die on me. And this is where you learn that you can actually get hurt. Nice little introduction to death. Of course, I had to figure out, like, what to do. I still don't understand the concept of yanking on her backpack to rehab her, but it is what it is. At this point, I was thinking, well, it's letting me go that way. It's letting me climb. It's letting me traverse the ledge. Um, I thought maybe there was going to be like a, a secret behind there, but it doesn't let you go back there. So, um, oh well. Big jump. I knew going into this part that this wasn't going to be good, and um, it will eventually, as you'll see, uh, it is kind of a trying, battling uh, for the first time. sure why that didn't work that time. It works the second time I do it. There's a little like, crap. 
crab beetles or whatever they are. A real pain in the ass, actually. Whisper echoed through the trees. Fought like someone who has stolen our champion's power. This is the last time this episode A we have to go through the book. small yet fantastical band of sprites emerged surrounding Quill. I'm Veda, root seer of the mire, and you have crossed into our domain. She sized up Quill with a rueful gaze, then turned her attention upward. I sense you there, too. I have not felt the presence of such a promising reader in some time. A youthful warrior marched forward. Rootseer, I'm prepared to honor our great champion's legacy. Rodent, give us our glass. Quill stepped closer. Where is my uncle? If you've hurt him... Silence! Veda thundered back. It was Argus who summoned us here, and now I see why. Young one, I'm afraid the trees hum of attack. Your uncle's been taken to the castle of your ancestors. Quill's knees buckled as Veda continued. Argus put himself at great risk calling for us. Your uncle once took a solemn oath to protect the glass of your fallen king. He is the only one left who knows where it's been hidden. The Arcane have long sought to wrest that knowledge from him. And do you dare to cross into the mire with our glass? Sarfog will soon burn through this forest looking to tear you and your reader apart. Unless, of course, you find them first. Take these. Weapons made for the mighty champion who died so that your people could live. Quill felt its otherworldly power course through her. Find your uncle, Twofold before the serpent and its masters break him. The warrior fumed. Our glass with her? Rootseer, she's minuscule. Come now, the reader has chosen its hero. We must let their story unfold. Veda replied with a frost of finality and vanished into the shadows of the mire. I'm going to tell you, wearing that VR headset, though, and having to sit through non-actionable sequences like going through the story in the book like that um, kind of detracts because the straps tend to start hurting after about a half an hour. And I kind of, like, at that point, like, really just wanted to just get on with it. Like, do all the narration over the gameplay or something, but... Which, for somebody like me who doesn't have patience for stuff like that, really makes Final Fantasy VII Remake a pain in the fucking ass. It's 
like you practically buy a game and it's just full of non-playable, non-actionable cutscenes. There's more in that game than there is actual gameplay. So we're going into the temple here. And this is going to be it. This is where we're going to end it uh, with entering the temple. You'll get a little story and uh, we're going to call it uh, call it an episode. So thanks for joining us for the first episode of Moss VR. See you in the next episode, everybody. It was Quill's favorite story. How Sir Argus fought beside the Sprite Champion to seal this temple from the Arcane and secured the survival of their kinds. Simply standing in their heroic footsteps felt like a great honor.